Well, there were more Storos in August than days in that month. What's a Storo, you ask? Well, you know what it is. It's this year. Trucks crashing into Storo Drive overpasses like can openers ripping the top off or maybe slamming the brakes to avoid a crash altogether and then needing to back out of that road, creating a whole different kind of traffic nightmare. The Twitter account only in Boston has been keeping track of all the times it's happened in August. Ready? 34 crashes or near crashes on Storo Drive last month alone. Not that big of a surprise given the time of year with people moving into new apartments, lots of moving vans. And honestly, let's be let's be honest, not a big surprise really ever being Storoed has become the punchline in Boston. It's a verb. It's an inside joke for people living here, at least the ones who remember not to bring the big trucks onto Storo Drive. And the ironic part about all this is that Storoing, whom the drive was named after Storo, well, this is the last thing they want. And not just the crashes, too. Yeah. The parkway itself plagued by traffic. They didn't want a road there. So what's being done to prevent trucks getting storeroed? Well, that's our starting point tonight. Well, whether we're talking about raising the overpasses themselves or maybe lowering parts of the road, the possible solutions out there aren't exactly simple. No, so let's start with something simple, right? If you're new to the city, this quick diagram could save you a lot of hassles, honestly, even if you've lived here your whole life. Just take a look. Soro Drive in Boston, the, raw, the road that goes right along the Charles River, goes from the Longfellow Bridge to the BU Bridge, where it connects to Soldiers Field Road. So it has a height limit, 10 feet. Let's say you drive a Camry, right, Tim? Yep. Plenty of room. No Easy. problem. Camrys in and out. Boom. They're about four foot eight. Pickup truck, like a Ford F-150, that's about six four. So the standard U-Haul moving truck, let's talk about them. That would be like, you know, if you're moving into your Alston apartment or whatever. Yep. Ten feet. The moral of the story is don't drive the big trucks on Storo Drive. Camrys Ever. are perfectly cool. Camrys, yes. Trucks, absolutely not. Big trucks, no. Plenty of drivers somehow not getting that message. So where is that message coming from? It is not Mass DOT. It is not the city of Boston. It is the State Department of Conservation and Recreation. They're the keepers of parkways like Storo and Memorial Drive. When you think about it, it kind of makes sense. Parkways, parks, right? So we went to the DCR commissioner, Jim Montgomery, who told us his group actually has jurisdiction over a lot of roads in the city and around Massachusetts. Not that many people realize the... Um the volume of roads in the metro area that are actually DCR roads, and they're not they're not City of Boston, City of Cambridge, or Mass DOT roads. Uh, but we do work very closely with all of those agencies. So we asked the commissioner about some of the more obvious potential solutions. Why not just raise the bridges? He pointed out you don't just raise one bridge without impacting the entire area. When you raise a bridge, you have to make it longer. The approaches have to be changed uh, because you you, know, the, you can't have a roadway coming in too steep. Uh, the challenges at places like Memorial at, at, at Mass Ave um, is the interstate. You know, the, the intersection is is right next. The bridge is not right next to the to the river. Uh, those intersections, everything would have to be raised as well, and there's just not a lot of a space to do so. You know, it's one thing to conceptualize all those changes. It's something completely else to actually coordinate a project and then also pay for it. The commissioner said for reconstructing each bridge, you're looking at $20 million a pop. And remember, you got to do all of them. It kind of defeats the purpose if just one overpass is left at its current height. So you're looking at a, at a roadway like Memorial Drive or uh, or Sturrow, you know, a number of bridges that would have to happen, not not. You know, even you know, mentioning the permitting, every structure is close to the river would require extensive environmental permitting, um, and uh, all of the bridges over parkways uh, are are owned by Mass DOT, so there would have to be a you know a, a significant coordination there. Okay, raising all the Storo Drive overpasses, not a viable solution. So what about lowering the road? I mean, we're just trying to figure this out. Quick example in Westwood, there's a bridge that brings you out to 128. Oof. Right there, everyone knows this bridge. The commuter rail goes over the bridge. And just like Storo, it's like a magnet for trucks that can't fit underneath, as you saw in the video right there. That, that video was from before the road was lowered. Then a few years ago, the MBTA finished work to lower the road about three feet Still, though, even with the higher clearance, trucks still get stuck underneath, so not a total fix. But a lower road's got to help a little, right? Sure. But Storo Drive cannot be lowered. Here's the commissioner. You're right next to the, the Charles River. You'd be below the water line. Uh, parkways are very close to the water. Make, making them lower would, would make it that much harder to keep them dry. Uh, the underpasses, such as at Mass Ave on Memorial, uh, have the lowest clearance at, at nine feet. Um, water frequently has to be pumped out of those uh, to, to keep underpasses to keep them dry in a heavy rain. 
We saw that just last week with that extreme rain. An SUV can get stuck below an overpass when floodwaters have nowhere to go, Tim. So there is at least one solution that's already in place. Signs, lots of signs. The DCR in the last week, very active on Twitter as well, posting all of these pictures trying to give people as many warnings as possible, right? You got the signs stamped on the bridges themselves. You see it there, clearance 10 feet, zero inches. You also have the signs before Storo drives, warn, warning big truck drivers to get off the road before it's too late. And then they even got signs like this, and this is where it gets kind of interesting, right? So it's got that low-hanging part to it. It says cars only, and that part's dangling below the big sign itself. So when big trucks get on store, or at least try to, they may hit that bottom part. It is designed that way to give those drivers a bit of a jolt to get them to pay attention. So they hit that instead of hitting a bridge. So why not just add more signs? The commissioner explains. If you just, you know, keep adding signs, it's just more signs for people, you know, to ignore. Um, but there are 27 entry points where we have overheight warning signage in place. The good thing is those signs have prevented most bridge strikes. Uh, not all, clearly. As I said, it's a very low number that actually do strike the bridges. Uh, so the signage um, does prevent a lot. Some people, though, still missing those signs. We spoke with the CEO of a local moving company, Gentle Giants, who says people can easily get distracted. I think a lot of people have so much going on when they're moving a, a son or a daughter to Boston and they're, you know, will I get the keys? When will I get the keys? I need to get here. I need to do that. And they're maybe looking at their phone instead of looking up and realize, gosh, I'm on a low hang. I'm on a, on a, a no truck route here. And um, I mean, the damage is, is ridiculous and it could cost you you know, upwards of tens of thousands of dollars uh, to re repair one of those trucks. Nobody wants that. Remember, even if you avoid getting on Storo, Boston isn't without its obstacles. Drivers always have to be vigilant about stuff hanging over the road that could damage your truck. We do a lot of work on Beacon Hill and over in North End, areas where there are very, very narrow streets. Uh, you, you've got low power lines. You've got nice trees in the neighborhoods. Uh, you also have things like fire escape stairs. So, so much to look out for when you're twisting and turning those trucks around narrow streets in the city. It's, it's very, very challenging. So he mentioned it there, looking at your phone. If you're like the rest of us, you maybe use Google Maps or ways to get around. They, of course, give you options like avoid tolls, but they don't really have an option to factor in height restrictions. So we also asked the DCR what was up with that. They said they've reached out to GPS companies over the years. And so far, those big GPS companies, it just hasn't happened. They haven't added that to their list of things that you could choose on their app. There are a couple apps, however, that do track height restrictions. You're looking at them here. We got three of those apps up on your screen. There's Sigic uh, Truck Navigation. That one's free. There's also Copilot Truck and Smart Truck Route. Those last two, you could actually download free, free trial period. JC, I would do it like the day you're moving or the day before. Yeah, Use the free trial and then get rid of it. But it's another thing you got to put on your list. And when yeah. you're moving, the last thing you want is another thing on your list. You're not just damaging that moving truck you've rented when you crash into a bridge. Obviously, you're damaging the bridge, right? We asked DCR about what sort of damage bridges over store drive take. And thankfully, the commissioner says the bridges haven't taken any substantial damage. He says it's all about size of the trucks and how fast they're going. If you've been on store drive, you know it's Hard to go fast. He pointed to a big crash, however, this summer involving a huge truck on 93 in Medford, just for comparison. An interstate highway versus a parkway are very, very different. I'm sure the speed and the size of, of, the, of the vehicle that struck that bridge, you know, I don't know, you know, the circumstances, but I'm sure they're very different. You know, interstate highways have different height restrictions than, than we do. So that's why it's, it's, it doesn't happen, happen as often on an interstate highway uh, than, you, than you would see on our, our uh, River uh, Parkways. You could drive a Camry and a U-Haul truck on most highways. Look, this isn't just a problem that pops up when college kids are moving into town. Trucks truly get storeroad all the time, sometimes by actual truck drivers. DCR, of course, isn't okay with any crashes on the parkway. So they're currently looking at maybe potential more improvements and maybe low-hanging signs that offer more than just a bump and a warning. But we do plan to improve those sign in, uh, the sign system, make entry points nearly uh, impenetrable for overhead vehicles you know, going forward. Um, we expect to hire a design consultant this fall who will help us consider all of the alternatives to improving our existing overhead warning system. So we mentioned it at the top of the show. Here's where things get a little bit ironic, maybe a little sad, too. James Jackson Storo, where the road gets his name, he was in the banking business and part of that team that founded General Motors way back in the day. Right. 
he likely would be appalled if he saw what Storrow Drive is today. He was involved in the creation of the park and embankment on the Boston side of the Charles River, the very popular Esplanade. This is what it looked like before, but in the late 1800s, the space was filled in to create the embankment. When he died about 100 years ago, his widow donated a million dollars in his name to enlarge and beautify the Boston shores of the Charles River. Storrow Drive is not what they had in mind. The rumor is the stipulation with that donation of money is no roads at all. His widow, though, uh, fought efforts to build a freeway that would cut into that very important park space by the Charles. The road you see on the screen there, that was actually the old embankment road. Storrow hadn't been built back then. It was only after she died in 1944 the state said, yeah, let's go, go ahead and build a road there. So then Storrow Drive is built and then named after the Storrows. And that punchline, Storrowing, is now forever connected to a family that never wanted a road there in the first place. You know, but it's ironic, of course. However, it's also like it's cursed, right? Like, we didn't want the road there. You know what? I didn't. I never thought about it that I way. I hadn't that, either until you just read, as you were just talking about... That's right. This is, this is them coming back that's and saying, we didn't want a road. No one should drive yeah, on this road. His wife Helen fought it, fought it, fought it. She passes away. They do it anyway. And she's like, well, you're going to do that? Guess Surpri what we're going to do. Surprising for a lot of people, DCR is in control of this, but yeah. they do have potential plans in the fall where they're going to talk about uh, maybe adding more signs or something else. So we'll, of course, stay on top of this story, especially <laughs> if they add don't, more... Don't drive the truck. I'm sorry that. Yeah.